welcome to another edition of La Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And today on the show, we're gonna uh, show you some networking tools. How oh. to diagnose your network. This sounds very exciting. It's compelling, compelling podcasting. There's a reason that people want to know this. So this is gonna be useful to sell you too. We're gonna dig, dig deep and find some networking tools and show you how to use them so that you can troubleshoot your network. All right, all right. Let's pause for a message from our sponsor and we'll be right back after this. This is a pair of sneakers. They're worn and comfy. This is a Jack Russell Terrier. It likes shoes. This is Camtasia Studio 4. It can edit your screencasts. Now answer our trivia question. What screencast editor can be left unsupervised and doesn't smell like feet? I'll be back at the end of the show with the answer. The great thing about this episode is I get to use one of my favorite technology words. What word is that, Andy Walker? Ping. 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 In fact, if I recall correctly, you were going to have a uh, podcast with that word in it. The next big ping. The next big ping.com, which I never really did, sadly, because I just don't have time. I'm just so busy with here with lab rats. But we do have the chance now to talk about Well, we're going to use the word ping. ping now. Okay. Ping. What is ping? Ping is a, a special hidden network administrator tool that allows you to basically reach out and go, hey, are you there? Mm -hmm. But in network ease. So mm -hmm. if Sean's a computer, and I'm a computer across the network, I'll send a packet to Sean, and I'll go ping, and he'll he'll ping, ping me back. Yeah, so, it's it's based on radar, essentially. The ping sound that that's you true. get when you return a bit of a signal. Sonar, 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 sonar. Not radar. Sonar. sonar. All right, there you go. So um, now ping is used basically to say, "Hey, are you there?" across a network, and you can do it from one computer to another on the same local network, or you can do it from one computer to another across mm -hmm. the internet. Mm -hmm. So um, let's fire off the ping tool, and uh, let's just we'll, we'll show you how ping to... ping tool. It is a ping tool, yeah. So I'm going to use Windows Vista here to show you how to do this, but it's also available on the, on the Mac, and we'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, do we have a machine that goes ping? <laughs> we will in a minute. All right, so I'm going to click on uh, the Windows button here, and I'm going to type CMD. And that opens a command window. Basically, it's like a DOS emulator back in the day. Now, if you have a Windows XP machine, you can go start, run, and type CMD and click OK. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think back on, in the days of uh, 98 and ME, it was you type the word command. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm just going to open it up here. We're going to have a, a nice, pretty black window. Oops. While nice you're doing that, I'm going to let you know how to do that on the Mac. You yeah. open up Spotlight and type in Terminal. And uh, then that will show up as one of your top hits or applications. So you have a little box that's in white. Yep. And I got a little box here so sitting in black. Right. All right, so to use the ping tool, uh, it's designed to say, hey, you know, is my, am I connected to the network right now? So one of the most convenient um, uses for the, for the ping tool is to test to see if your router is actually online. If your computer is connected to a home network, and you want to say, hey, router, are you there right now? Now, you'll need to know the IP address of your router. And uh, you know, most brands have common IP addresses. Mm -hmm. If you use a Linksys router, it's 192.168.1.1. We'll put it right here. Mm -hmm. If you're using a D-Link router, it's 192.168.0.1. I think Netgear is .2.1, and uh, anyway. Yeah, some of those, the, the, it switches around depending on generation too. But you so look in the manual. You look in your manual because you'll be able to find out what your IP address is. So to use the ping, so we're going to sit here at the command line here, and I'm going to type in the word ping. And I'm going to ping my Linksys router, which is here at, at, in the studio, 192.168.1.1. And I hit enter. So what's going to happen is my machine is now going to send a, a piece of data out to that address and say, hey, are you there? And what you see is a reply that comes back from that router. And as you, so if we, if we look here, it says reply from 192.168.1.1. So, mm -hmm. And it tries four times. Uh, it sent a 32-byte packet out. And uh, it shows a time. Now, the time is the time it takes for my machine to send it out and to get a response back mm -hmm. from 192.168.1.1. Four milliseconds in this particular case. It's on the same network. So that's about right. That's about the speed fast. you should, should have. Uh, on uh, on your home network, mm -hmm. and in fact, you can actually see it's uh, the, the second, third, and fourth one is one millisecond each. Yes, very very quick. So same sort of deal on the Mac. You just type ping, and then the the name of the address. Sorry, one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one, 
same sort of deal, and we should get that back fairly quickly. Uh, the results that it returns is slightly different, and, and uh, with uh, the Windows version, you get only a limited amount before it says, okay, that was successful. This one will go on for a while. So you just hit Control C to stop it. To terminate it. And then it'll tell you what's up. Now, the nice thing about ping is it's not only a local technology, you can actually use this across the network, as you mentioned. That's right. And you don't actually have to know the IP address. So if you are trying to figure out, say, you know, we're saying labrats.tv doesn't seem to be responding at this point, is it online? Mm -hmm. So we can type ping labrats.tv and see what's up. And you know what? It's sending back the information. So if the web pages aren't showing up, there's something else happening there. So that's a nice, easy way to diagnose what's going on in the remote end as well. Absolutely. Um, and in fact, uh, the most common thing to ping when you want to see if you're connected to the internet proper is to ping yahoo.com. I guess it was, you know, fairly consistent servers always been up. It's been around for a long, long time. So people, mm -hmm. network administrators will say, well, I'm going to type ping yahoo.com and see if, mm -hmm. if that responds. Now, what's useful here is that you could ping, for example, yahoo.com and google.com. And uh, if one doesn't respond, it means that that web server perhaps is offline. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, oh, but then I've, I've also seen situations where server will respond on a ping, but the web server won't come up. That means that exactly. something weird is going on at that end. Yeah. But the machine is still fundamentally, like, fundamentally connected to the internet. Right. In the case of a corporate situation, it may be that their gateway to the internet is live, but the machine that is serving the web pages in behind that is not is not responding. That's one way to do it. So yes. ping tool. That's very very useful. Uh, and then the other one I wanted to show you, uh, which helps you diagnose when you're having kind of an ordinary internet connection service uh, problem here, um, you know, one day, let's say that you wake up in the morning, you go to your computer, um, and your router is there, and it pings, but for whatever reason, you can't get anything out on the internet. It's a great way. There's a tool called Traceroute, mm -hmm. and I'm going to type this here, T-R-A-C-E-R-T. -E Traceroute is basically, what it does is it's kind of a, it, it, it bounces all over the internet on its way to a destination and tells you which computers it hits. Because of course, mm -hmm. when you call for information on the internet, you don't actually go directly to that computer necessarily. You may actually take a, a winding route through the internet across geographic locations until your packet arrives. So this is kind of handy to, uh, again, you can use Yahoo. I'm going to type in traceroute Yahoo. And we'll go through what exactly it responds with here. So it's going to do a hop. So it's the first one it's here, it's saying one millisecond, it's hit my router there. That's the Linksys router internally here at, at, the, uh, at the studio. Now, the next hop is probably going to be my ISP or my internet service provider. Mm -hmm. and we use Rogers here uh, in Toronto, uh, at least I do. Um, and as you can see, uh, that may be the gateway on its way to Rogers. Uh, the next one is sort of a timeout. So I don't know what's happening there. Maybe something's masked. Perhaps uh, uh, there's no data that came back from it. Maybe it got lost mm -hmm. on the way back. And then it, it goes out. So we, we're actually hitting different points here. Uh, on the Rogers cable network mm -hmm. as it's heading its way out locally, out to their main switch, and all the way out to the internet. Now, this is really useful for diagnosing where the problem is if you're not getting internet, uh, because you'll generally see your router first, as you mentioned, and then a, a gateway, which would be the, the modem or you know something else that's local. And if it stops there and you're just getting the timeouts and timeouts and timeouts, your connection problem is outside your router. So you can see in some cases, if you start getting things from uh, cable.rogers.com as we're seeing here, but then it just stops. Then you're getting a connection to your provider just mm -hmm. fine, but mm -hmm. then there's a problem on the internet, so there's nothing that can be done about it at that point. Right. I mean, you can't call them out and say, well, can you please fix this? Because they're, they're working on it already, most likely. Absolutely. And the other thing you, you can also see is if your ISP is having a problem, mm -hmm. or your, uh, because you may see it hit the first level, like here we're looking at etobe.fub.net.cable.rogers.com. That's the local. But if it doesn't get out to, and if you do this on a fairly regular basis and you get to know what uh, routers it, uh, it actually hits on the way out, you may see that, wait a second, the, uh, the regional router of the ISP is working, but the one that the, maybe the central gateway is not, so it's not responding today. So you know that Rogers, you know, in this particular case, is not available. Now, you, what's cool about this is you can actually call up the, the ISP and say, hey guys, your uh, network's down the go, yeah, well, we don't know, we're working on it. And you can go, well, I know that the problem is that, and you can be a real geek about it, which is kind of fun. <laughs> It's, the, it's nice to know this, have this information yes. handy. So we can do the same thing as Andrew just did on the Mac. Instead of typing trace writ, you type out the whole thing, T-R-A-C-E-R-O-U-T-E, -E, trace route, and then the, the name of the address that you're going to, and it'll do roughly the same thing yet again. Oh, very cool. Cool. So there you go. There's two very, very handy network tools that uh, you may 
you should use when you're having problems with your home networking. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually show you one one uh, another network tool really really quickly okay, here because sure. we're running out of time. All right. um, it's called Who Is. Now let's see if it's available on this. I know on the Mac if you type Who Is and then the name of the uh, domain. So again we'll go Yahoo.com. It'll actually send a query out to a Who Is server that uh, stores the information that this domain was registered as. In some cases, you won't see much. Uh, Yahoo is not showing much of anything at all, except for various things here. It's, it's not showing. If, if you look, at, if you want to know who owns this domain, for example, uh, say they own yourname.com, and you want to buy that, you can do a who is and find out that way. All right. And you can do it right from the uh, the terminal line in in Mac. So you don't have to go to a who is server online. You can just type it right here and get that info. And the often. reason that works here is because uh, there's a Unix backend on Mac. Right. And it's a traditional Unix command. So does it work there? It does not. I just tried it, and no. uh, it does not. So and in that Windows case, you can go to a who is server online That's and right. find it out. There you go. Okay. Well, let's uh, break for another message from one of our sponsors, and we'll be back with the final thoughts. <laughs> Earlier in the show, we asked you what screencast editor can be left unsupervised and doesn't smell like feet. Is it A, a pair of sneakers, B, a Jack Russell Terrier, or C, Camtasia Studio 4? The answer is Camtasia Studio 4. Learn more at labrats.techsmith.com. Put a little plug in for my book here. Very little. Yeah. No, no. Actually, it's this is uh, in my new book, Windows Vista Help Desk. The the entire chapter on uh, on networking. Um, there's actually some information about ping and trace through here mm -hmm. to help you diagnose those kinds of problems. So uh, if you're interested in more about that, and we didn't give you enough here on this show, then uh, please check that out. Windows Vista Help Desk available at a local bookstore near you. No. It's a little commercial. Moving on. All right. We've got photo. We got photos. We good. We got a photo here. Yes. Very so good. We've got these guys as usual. Plus, oh, we have a viewer's cats. Hey, we're speaking of cats. Yes. So oh, this, this looks like Biff's brother. It does kind of look like Biff, but this is Ozzy. Ozzy from Australia. Possibly. Possibly. But this—that's the name of the cat, Ozzy. Yeah. And who owns Ozzy? Do we know? Yes. <laughs> but you don't have it right now, right? No. No. <laughs> well, thank you, Ozzy's owner, for sending in a picture of Ozzy. Whether you're from Australia or not. Um, oh, he looks like he uses JBL speakers too. JBL speakers. And it's got World of Warcraft. Ah, oh, freak setting. And the oh, Bronte myth. Oh, wow. Awesome. Big Charlie, Bro Charlotte Bronte fan there. Okay. All right, moving on. That it? That's it for today. Just one picture today. Just one picture. All right. Send yours to feedback at labrats.tv. Not too big, not too small. Make them just right. Right. And uh, Steve Huntress, our uh, web designer, just walked into the studio, so I'm going to give him a little plug today. Hello. Steve Hello. Yeah, SteveHuntress.com is his website. He designed uh, LabRats.tv, Cyberwalker.com, AndyWalker.com, but not GlobalHermit.com. Not yet, anyway. No. No. Oh, well. All right. Well, that's it for us. <laughs> Thank you for downloading this week. My name is Andy Walker. I'm John Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Are you ready? Maybe that's what we should do is uh, ask people, send pictures of your goats. Don't no. send pictures of you. We don't want to see you. I don't Jerks. See no, 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 more no more goatsies. No more goatsies. Send us pictures of your hamsters and your gerbils and your turtles and your kangaroos in honor of Steve Hunters and your koalas and your wombats. I use that too. All right, we're promising him forever. Send your tents many devils, yes. Stuff, perhaps. Okay, what's next? <laughs>